if, if you at the, uh, the, the uh, keynote that I gave yesterday, um, I talked about three general strategies for AJAX applications. Uh, strategy number one was you have an existing web application and you want to gradually add some AJAX enabled features or some richer GUI controls to it. And the solution there is to take a uh, AJAX library like ext.js or jQuery or Dojo and add it onto your existing application. Um, strategy, uh, general approach number two is you're building an application from scratch and you want it to be a hybrid application. You want it to have some traditional page flow where you submit a form and go to an entirely different page. But you also want to have some AJAX enabled features. Um, and in that situation, probably the best approach for, for, for most uh, projects is to use a uh, web development framework that has integrated AJAX support. So if you're a Java developer, you would use JSF 2.0 or Struts 2.0 or Spring MVC 3. If you're a .NET developer, you would use uh, ASP.NET uh, AJAX. And but then the third category is you're starting a brand new project. Um, you're not trying to incrementally add onto an existing project. And you want it to look basically like a desktop application. But you still want it to run entirely on the web. That's what, what GWT is about. And that's what I want to talk about in this, in this uh, lecture. So first I want to talk about well, why, why are we even doing web apps? Because GWT is a lot more complicated than, for instance, a desktop application in Java. So why are we doing something more complicated when we could do something uh, simpler? Talk about the, the, the big idea of, of GWT. And then I think this is really the, the, the key part. GWT has some very significant advantages over some of the other AJAX approaches. But it also has some very significant disadvantages. You know, and, and one of the things that really bothers me about um, technology evangelists, you know, the, pe the, the, the people in the world you know, whose job is to promote a technology. My job here is definitely not to promote GWT. And you know, if you read a book on struts or a book on GWT or you go to the website or a book on Spring, they talk about all the good features, but they never mention any of the negatives. And you know, many of these, these uh, applications and approaches are trade-offs. They buy you a lot in one area, but then it costs you a lot in another area. And I think GWT is a prime example of that. It has some very significant advantages, but some extremely important and serious disadvantages for certain types of applications. And so understanding those advantages and disadvantages, I think, is really the, the, the key. So you can you know, pick the approach that fits your, fits your application and steer your project to, to the technologies that, that fit, fit well for it. OK, so first, just a, 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 quick, a, a quick review of, of, of web applications. Um, and the, the, the bottom line is that no matter what you use, whether you use GWT, whether you use ext.js, whether you use ASP.NET AJAX, whether you use Dojo, web applications will never be very good. <laughs> you know, web applications fundamentally use HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. And that is not a very rich tool set for building graphical user, interface, uh, graphical user interfaces. So the, the GUI that you get with a web application, no matter how much you soup it up with all these tools, is not very good. Furthermore, HTTP is crummy. Now, I used to share an office with one of the guys who was on the original web development team and was the uh, um, owner of the first commercial company that ever sold a browser called Spy Spyglass. And I'm not meaning to, you know, to, to diss my office mate and, and you know, criticize him, but they weren't thinking of current web applications. They were thinking of technical documents. And so when HTTP was designed, it wasn't designed for the highly interactive back and forth remembering session sorts of applications we use it for, for now. Um, so web applications fundamentally are bad. So the big question is, well, why do we want to use them? Why make web applications? And we, I, if you were at the keynote yesterday, I, I talked about this. And you're all familiar with, it, with this. The main reason for doing web applications is so that anybody can access it from any place. Um, and uh, a number of, I, I gave the story in the keynote as well. I was, I was in the Philippines uh, a few months ago. And I went to a very remote island that even Filipinos aren't aware of. And I rented a motorbike. And I'm driving down a little paved road that turns into a one-lane dirt road, which turns into a one-meter wide path. And I'm driving through the countryside and through the rice paddies. And they're plowing their fields with, uh, they call them carabao, water, water buffalo. 
Um, and I arrive at a little tiny internet cafe. And I'm able to check my email on Gmail or Yahoo Mail. I was using Gmail uh, then. And that's why you want web applications. Somebody walks up to a random computer that's connected to the same network as you. It doesn't have to be the internet. It could be an intranet in, inside your, your company. Um, but if you don't need that, don't use web applications. In particular, if you're building an application inside of a company, and the people that access that application access it from a relatively small set of computers, then web applications are a waste of time. It's a lot more effort, and you get a lot poorer result for the end user. Make a normal program and have an automatic update feature so that the, uh, the application always stays, stay, stays up to date. Um, so people want web apps for the reason that people can access it from any random computer with no special software installed ahead of time. If that's not your requirement, don't do web apps. Um, but web apps are inefficient compared to AJAX applications. Because in a traditional web app, you enter some data, you press submit, and then you wait. And you wait, 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 and finally you get a, a web page back. And the problem is twofold. One, the server has to send you an entire web page back, even if only one little tiny piece of data has changed. And secondly, it's synchronous. When you press submit at Google, you can't do anything until the entire result comes back. And so you're stuck in the meantime. It's a very inefficient way of, of, of working. And so the, the goal of AJAX applications is to have finer grained updates. Send smaller pieces of data back from the server instead of large pieces of data. And do it asynchronously so that you can keep typing in, 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 in the meantime. And the, the, a classic example that you've all, you, everybody here has seen is the Google homepage. So on the Google homepage, if I type in my name, the minute I type an M, JavaScript sends that M across the network to Google. A Java program answers the phone. It talks to their C++ indexing algorithm, finds the 10 most popular queries that start with M, send the information back, and it's inserted into, into the page. But if I'm on a slow connection and I type real fast, I don't know if I'm on a very slow connection now. Yeah, I type real fast there. It takes a while to catch up. But that's OK. I'm not frozen in the meantime. I can keep typing. And if I don't even want those auto-completion and I press submit, it's OK. Um, so the two advantages here is I'm getting smaller pieces of data back and forth. And most importantly, it's asynchronous. I can keep typing ahead. And if you know, Google is real slow and it takes 20 seconds, that's OK. I don't have to wait for it. Um, so that's why you want AJAX on top of traditional web applications. Um, and People have tried to have real programs embedded in the browser. Um, and the most uh, kind of famous early example was Java. We all forget now that the original use of Java, um, the original popular use of Java, was for programs embedded in a web page. Nobody does that with Java anymore. Java, you know, Java applets basically were a failure, and nobody uses them any, uh, hardly ever uses them any, anymore. But that's kind of what got, what, what got, what got Java started. Flash is a very serious player in this space. Um, and Flash is a very good alternative for many of these sorts of almost AJAX applications. The only issue with Flash, the main issue with Flash, is it requires a plugin. So there's no way that internet cafe in Palawan in the Philippines had Flash installed on those computers. So if my application was Flash, I would not have been able to access it. But because I was accessing Gmail, which only uses the technologies that come standard in a browser, I was able to access it. Um, Flash has some other issues, some, some good and, and, and some bad. My topic is, is not Flash, but this is certainly a serious player in that, in that space. But many applications want pure browser applications. No extra plugins required, and they function in a, in, in a normal way in, in a browser. OK, so we talked about the, the, the Google homepage. OK, so first we want web applications. Make sure you really want web applications especially in intranet applications, frequently a regular program that's installed with some sort of automatic updates is a better alternative, easier to develop, and richer experience for the end user than a web application. Um, if you want web applications, you often want AJAX. You want to make them more interactive. You want to make them have uh, finer grained up updates. But even then, you have two problems. And so GWT came along and tries to address two problems for the people who A, want web applications, and B, want AJAX. And that is 
JavaScript. <laughs> and, and